Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Also Petit. Welcome to my channel. In today's tutorial I will demonstrate how to make the tote bag. It is a soft tote bag that is perfect for any beginner. It features middle and side panels which are perfect to showcase the fabric with the large prints or coordinate a color blocking if you would like. It has nice handles, um, long enough so you can wear it on your shoulder. The bag is also fully lined. I like this style because you can easily fold it, squish it and put it in your larger backpack or handbag and use it whenever you need on your shopping trips. Today I'm going to make this version which is a little bit more sturdy because I used waterproof canvas for my external panels. I also interfaced my lining and stabilized my handles. I decided to add external slip pockets to my front and back panels. So if I need to grab my wallet, phone or keys, it's much more handy because Toad doesn't have any internal pockets. If you would like to make this tote bag with me, you need to go to my website to get the pattern. The link will be included in the description. If this is something you would like to learn, then keep on watching. To complete today's project, you would need some external and lining fabric. I'm using a waterproof canvas for my external fabric and a quilting cotton for my lining. Um, it is optional and it's not included in a pattern, but you can also apply some woven interfacing to the wrong side of your fabric. I'm going to do that for my lining today. Additionally, you would need a ruler to take some measurements, your favorite marking tools, a seam reaper in case if something goes wrong, some snips and scissors, clips or pins to hold your fabric together, and some thread and hand needle to close the opening in the lining. You need to cut two pieces uh, for the front and back from your external fabric and your lining fabric, two side pieces from your external and lining fabric, two handles from your external fabric. If you like, you can also interface both handles with a small strip of Decoville light uh, just to add it some st uh, structure and uh, strength to the handles. And lastly, you would need to cut one piece of base from your external and lining fabric. If you're making the tote bag with additional slip pockets on the outside, you would also need to cut two pieces of your um, slip pocket from your external fabric and your lining fabric. Take both of your handles and on the wrong side, draw a line in the center. Alternatively, you can take your handle and press it in half. We're going to fold the longer edges of the handles towards that line in the middle, on both sides. Just like that. If you press your handle in half and you don't have that line in the middle, you need to fold the long edges toward that crease that you've created. Once you're ready and you've got those long edges pressed, you're going to fold the handle in half and we're going to line those two folded edges together. You're going to pin that in place. And now we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch close to the edge alongside both sides of the handles. We're going to repeat the, the process for the other handle.
Once you've got your um, handles stitched down, you can put them aside for later. Take your external side panels and on the wrong side of the fabric, so this is my right, this is my wrong side, you're going to measure 1.5 centimeters on, uh, from the bottom edge. So take your ruler and your marking pen, I'm just using a normal pencil, measure one and a half centimeter. On both sides and repeat it on the other side um, panel. Take your external front and one of your side panels and with right sides together you're going to place the side panel on top of the front piece. We're going to line it up on one side. To make sure we line up the side panels correctly you need to have the bottom edge of the side panel slightly above the, the front panel. So you can see that I have about 1.5 centimeters front panel showing up here. When on the top, I will have, if you flip it to the other side, you, you should have about 1.5 centimeter side panel showing up. So on the top edge, the side panel is hanging over and on the bottom edge, the uh, front panel is hanging over. Once you've got that lined up, you can pin everything together. Once you've got that pinned down, you can do the same thing on the other side of the front piece with the other side panel. So next, we can take it to the machine and sew on both sides using 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. What is important here is that you need to stop the stitching line exactly where you mark the 1.5 centimeter notch from the bottom edge. So when the marking is here, we're going to stitch and we're going to stop here before we get to the bottom edge. This is very important to make the process of attaching base uh, easier for you later on. You're going to take your external back piece and you're going to line up the side edges with your side panels. Again, we're going to stitch down on both sides, stopping 1.5 centimeters from the bottom edge. Okay, we've got all four panels together. You've got front, back and both sides. If you like, you could trim the seam allowance um, by half. I like to leave it at full seam allowance because normally I uh, wouldn't interface the fabric. So in case if it frays a little bit, I've got enough um, seam allowance to stop it from ripping. If you follow the pattern, at this point, you would press the seam allowance open on all sides. However, because I'm doing the um, external slip pockets, the seam naturally would wants to go towards the side, so I'm not going to fight it. Uh, I'm going to press all my seams towards the side panels. Because this is waterproof canvas and it's a little bit sticky on the wrong side, I'm going to use my, my cloth to protect the fabric.
Now we're going to take your external base panel and we're going to line it up alongside the long edge of the front and back panel pieces. So you're going to take your base panel, find the middle notches, pin it together, then it should line up nicely along that edge. Now you can flip the panel over and repeat the process. You can take this to the machine now and we're going to stitch along both long edges using 1.5 cm seam allowance. Again, you're going to stop 1.5 cm from the end on both sides. So it is easier if you stitch with your external front or back panel pieces uh, facing up. So you know exactly where you stitched the sides. You're going to start and stop exactly along um, those two points. You're going to line up the short edges uh, with the side panels. Push the seam allowance away from, uh, from the side panel. You can tighten the fabric and it should naturally line up with the base. Pin that in place. And repeat on the other side. When you're ready, you're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch the short sides using 1.5 cm seam allowance. Again, you're going to start and end exactly where the previous stitching lines are. You can trim the seam allowance along all sides of the base just to uh, reduce the bulk, especially at the corners. Next, you can take both of your handles and we're going to pin the short raw edge alongside the top edge of the front and back panels next to that uh, side seam line. Line it up and pin it. And you're going to do that on the other side. And repeat for the other handle. Now you've got your handles pinned down. We're going to take this to the machine and we're going to base the handle on all four sides. I would recommend to stitch back and forth a couple of times to strengthen the seam uh, because obviously we're going to use this tote to do some shopping or carry uh, possibly heavier items. So we don't want the handle to rip out of the tote and damaging our items.
Once you finish assembling the external pieces, you can put them aside for now. Now we're going to assemble the lining in the same way we've done the external piece. Once you've got all your panels pinned down, we're going to stitch all four seams exactly in the same way we've done for the external pieces. So you're going to start at the top, finish on the bottom, making sure you finish exactly where the 1.5 centimeter notch is. The only thing is different here is that we need to leave a um, small opening along one of the seams, it doesn't really matter which one, just to make sure we can turn the tote back to the right side um, later on. I like to leave the opening bigger than my hand, so it is easier for me to reach it inside and pull everything outside. Okay, once you've got all your seams uh, stitched down, you're going to open the seam allowance and press it flat. Next, you can take your lining base and with right sides together, we're going to line up the longer edges. Next, you can line up the short sides. Yet again, you can trim the seam allowance uh, in half along all sides of the base panel. Now you can turn your lining right side out. Take your external bag and you're going to put the lining inside the bag with the right sides facing each other. Make sure you tuck those handles inside, out of the way, put the lining inside. We're going to line up all four 
seam lines uh, of the external and lining uh, panels together. Once you've got your four seam lines uh, matched, you can line up the top edge and pin everything in place. Just like that. Now we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch around the top edge using 1.5 cm seam allowance. Pull the lining out and using the opening in the lining we're going to turn the entire tote bag right side out. Next you're going to put the lining inside the bag and line up the top edge. So we're going to put the in lining inside, fold it over so the wrong sides of the external and lining fabric face each other, line up nicely the top edge and pin it in place. However, I prefer to press the seam allowance first so it lays nice and flat and it's easier for me to line up the top edge. Now you can put the lining inside the bag. You're going to line up the top edge. Make sure to slightly roll the external fabric towards the lining. This will prevent the lining showing up once we top stitch the top edge. Once you've got that pinned down, we're going to take this to the machine and top stitch around the top edge. After you top stitch the top edge, you're going to pull the lining out of the bag 
and we're going to close the opening in the lining. So take your side seam and line up those uh, folded edges. It should line up nice and easy because we uh, pressed the seam beforehand. Going to pin that together. And you have two options now. You can either take this to the machine and top stitch along that uh, opening, making sure you catch all layers of the fabric. Alternatively, this is my preferred way, you can close the opening uh, by hand using a ladder or whip stitch. This process is more time consuming, however, it gives nicer uh, finish at the end. Once you've closed the opening, you can insert the lining into the bag. Make your corners neat and if needed, give it a final press.